It doesn't have to be a vista overlooking uh, the river, or it doesn't have to be uh, some hoarfrost uh, on some trees. You know, it doesn't have to be that. It, it's all about the moment, you know? It's contemplating the moment. It's gonna be good five minutes from now. Night photography for me has always been kind of relaxing. It's kind of meditative. I always feel like I can just be alone by myself and look at what I see and wonder about it and then try and compose things that have some sort of rhythm or melody to them that seems to work out. And uh, at night that always comes together in full focus because it's not, I'm not distracted by anything. Look at the light on that little outbuilding in the back. And then the smokestack silhouetted against the nighttime sky. It's perfect. I just have to get in the right place. In college, my roommate was an art major, and he squirreled me into the dark room. And I just was enamored by photography. And I went on to start out in medical photography and then went into scientific photography over at the University of Minnesota. I was doing some personal work, but it wasn't anything specific. It was uh, kind of the first order of seeing, you know. First we photograph things we know, right? And then we photograph things we interpret, and then we photograph things we reinterpret. Well, I was down there with photographing things I know. And then I had an epiphanal moment. I had to have surgery on my brain to pull out a benign tumor. There's definitely something of coming out of anesthesia that is life changing. You go, whoa, I dodged that bullet there. You know, here, I'm awake again. Okay, all right. What's going to be different now? So then I started my personal work. I first started doing pinhole photography of childhood landscapes. Uh, sometimes the kids would make little tableaus inside doll houses and I would, I would photograph them. That was part of uh, a McKnight Fellowship that I had in 1989. I didn't devise this compensation development. The original concept actually came from Ansel Adams. This is done in a very weak dilution, minimal agitation. We agitate once every two minutes. The reason why I use the compensation development for the night work is because it takes the very, very bright subjects and pulls them down automatically and allows the shadow values to come up because only when I agitate are the highlights developing. Otherwise, the rest of the time, the low values are, are developing. For me, the wet dark room is a part of uh, creative memory. The smell of the chemicals, uh, the wet, the, the sound of it shaking, all is a memory point. There are certain things that are tradition, you know, Christmas, holidays, Fourth of July, the smell of uh, hot dogs, all those things uh, access that part of your brain that is your creative memory part. And I even think my photographs access uh, the creative memory. I think that's why my photography works. All these landscapes and all these things are not all that exotic. We've seen them before, and we respond to them because of that. You know, they're familiar, they're comfortable, they make us feel a certain way. 
I think that is why I, I make photographs. It's part of replaying this creative memory. I mean, you know, why does a musician keep playing his horn? I don't know. Because he likes the way it sounds. I, you know, I like the way to, uh, a photograph it can be successful. I tend to just look at a scene and respond to it immediately. Um, I'm driving along at 60 miles an hour, and there it is, you know, there's the photograph, you know. Seeing is the biggest challenge, I think, in photography. There's photographs everywhere, you just gotta see them. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.